Yeah, well, the new concepts are very closely linked to the WHO 2022, which was released in July this year. So, of course, uh, there are lots of things about intraductal carcinoma, cryopreformed tumors. Uh, these are really huge chapters because uh, we consider that these are really very important, um, let's say, factors to predict bad outcome. We know that these patients have shorter uh, biochemical recurrence-free survival. They have more often, if you do radical prostatectomy, worse outcomes with positive margins, um, huge tumors, probably stage uh, TA, T3A tumors, which means extra prostatic extension and they have shorter overall survivals of course and more often a metastasis distant metastasis so one of the things is which really the clinicians have to take care of is when we say in our report there's cryo reform or there's an introductory component that they do not introduce an active surveillance to these patients even if it's a very small amount we do not have um, the obligation at the very moment to say how much amount is on the biopsy or on the prostatectomy just to say yes or no because already this a small amount seems to have really an impact the second thing is uh, well we, at the very moment, there are some studies ongoing where we think there are mutations, probably BRCA2 mutations, which will play a very important role in prostate cancer in these kind of lesions. This has not been proven, but there are very few uh, studies. So I think there will be ongoing studies to have a, look, a closer look to this because probably there are some mutations and at least alterations, genetic alterations in these kind of lesions. The second thing, uh, major thing is, of course, we do not talk about variants anymore, but subtypes, which uh, can be diagnosed by surgical pathology, because the variants is really for the molecular part. So we stop, you know, mixing up variants and subtypes. Um, we have new chapters, so we have put all the neuroendocrine tumors together. Um, except the treatment-related neuroendocrine prostate cancer, which remains in the chapter with prostate cancer, because we know that these patients normally have normal, well, classical, let's say, acinar uh, prostate cancer, and then they're treated with this androgen deprivation therapy, and after most of the time, two years, they really escape, and then they have this differentiation with part of the tumor, which becomes neuroendocrine. And then we know that these patients do not do very well. And therefore, it's really important to, 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 to mention this in a report and say how many percentage of the tumor is with a neuroendocrine differentiation. Uh, we have kept the ductal adenocarcinoma in a chapter apart because there are, a, well, there was a huge discussion in the editorial, but we think there are really mo molecular underlying uh, data which show that ductal is probably not exactly the same as acina adenocarcinoma. Uh, we pay very much attention that we really um, strike out uh, subtypes in the, in the different histological aspects of acinar carcinoma because we know that as soon as we have these subtypes or these a little bit different types, some of them are really aggressive and have to be recognized and mentioned, of course, in the report because this is important for the outcome and the treatment of the patient. So these were the most important messages. And we have changed the um, basal cell carcinoma, which is extremely rare and extremely aggressive, to adenoid cystic uh, carcinoma because it looks like the adenoid cystic in the in the salivary glands in the in the skin and it has the same molecular changes so there's no reason to call it basal cell tumor anymore.